All right. So tell me what you know about ACDC current. Give me some. Some. Anything. You know, DC flows in one direction. Oh, DC flows in one direction. All right. Compared to, because it's direct, right? That's why they call it direct. It's going in one direction. Anybody know how it goes? Positive, negative, negative, positive. All right, we'll get back to that. And then what did you say about AC? Both sides, both ways. So direct current will flow from one terminal to the other in one way only. But alternating current will flow one direction for a short amount of time and then go back and flow the other way. And then go back and flow the other way. And then go back and flow the other way. It just keeps doing that back and forth. And do you know what they call that every time it does? One complete revolution of positive to negative, back to forth? No, no, circuit's where you got the complete path and power oh, and relay. load. No, not relay. You guys do it with your TVs. When you're looking to buy a TV, it's one of the things that you're checking off on the box for the TV to make sure that you're getting a nice TV. Not the P, not the HD, but there's something else that you can buy a TV based on. Like it used to be really low, and now, and then they, it seems like they double it every time. What are the things that you know when you're looking for your TV? Like, what are some of the checklist things that you want to check off when you're trying to buy a TV? So you all had $1,000 right now, and I tell you, go buy a TV. Size. Size, okay, so you're going to go with size. Yep, okay, that's not really what I'm talking about. But yeah, so you're probably going to try to get the biggest one for the money. What else? Yeah, it's going to be a flat screen. They're all flat screens now. There's no CRT or anything, too. HD. HD, yeah, what else? Come on, y'all, you never had to buy a TV? You never gone with anybody? You never looked in Best Buy? You never go... Besides from size, what are some of the other things that are important about purchasing a TV, if you're going to buy a TV? Resolution. Resolution. Okay, so let's talk about the resolution. What makes the resolution so good? You know? Power. Well, power has something to do with it. Not necessarily power, but the frequency of power. You know how they measure frequency? Got What? Hertz! There you go, hertz. Frequency is measured in hertz. So you not only want to look for the size of the TV, you not only want to look for the, the P, the picture, right? The 1080p, it used to be 720. And then they used to have another one that was like 480 that was really low. It was big and blotchy, looked like blocks almost, looked like Minecraft. All the TV shows looked like Minecraft. So, but what, what was the hertz that you want to get? What are your hertz options? You don't know? You never had to shop for a TV? You never seen that on the TV? I've never seen what? Hertz. Hertz on a TV. Never? Mm, well, you'll see it now. It'll stick out to you because you either want to, the ones that's basic, the basic stuff that we got, what, what's happening right here with this light, it's moving back and forth uh, with that positive to negative all the way back and forward 60 times a second. So everybody go one. 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 And that one. That just happened 60 times with this projector, with all these lights, it went back and forth. Now what they figured out with the TVs is if you can make that go faster, then it would make for a smoother picture. All right. Now we're not even talking about the quality of the picture as far as like when it's a still frame, but when you have a lot of action, like a football game or an explosion from one of the action movies and they got a rapid explosion with the fire, that hurts makes a difference on how good and clear that picture is going to look when you get some action in it. So, we got, what well, we got, no, it's in the back. We have got to uh, think about, what, what's the 60s is a standard? What's another one? What's double that? 120. Yeah, 120. So 60, 120, and then you can get a really nice TV that's double that. How many hertz would that be? 240. 240, yeah, 240. So the number of hertz is its motion for alternating current going back and forth per second. And there's normally 60. You go to Europe, it's a little bit lower. It's 50 hertz. Which means that blinking, it's blinking 60 times a second. But how come you can't see it blink? It's too fast. It's too fast for the human eye. Okay. So yeah, those are some things about AC-DC current. So we're talking about direct current's only going to flow one way. Alternating current's going to go both ways. So direct current, I want you to think about moving in one direction. Moving in one direction. Always flows from negative to positive. Now, I think in the other video I mentioned positive to negative when I was talking real fast, but that's true with a battery. It's always going to flow from negative to positive. The electrons are always going 
to the positive terminal when it's connected in a circuit. It can be used through a chemical action. So like, I think I had a battery up here that was bad. Check it out, you pass it around. It's got a little bit of the chemical on the outside. And I think you've all seen this. So this is happens when you have the battery, it died, and some of the chemical now has come out from around the zinc casing. So don't touch the, don't touch the, the just touch the cover on the Duracell battery. Yeah, don't touch the battery acid stuff. That's bad. But that's some of the chemical that you're seeing. So there's an electrolyte. So what you're seeing on the outside, don't scrape it. Don't just look at it and pass it on. Thank you. So chemical electrolyte is coming out of that. Some of the electrolyte, there wasn't enough space after it died off in the battery. So it's expanding out and coming out through some of the seams. All right. And you've all seen that. Just don't touch it. Now, if that gets on your tool, because what happens is people usually leave the tools with the batteries in them over a long period of time, and if they don't use them for a while, you're gonna come back to your tool, and it's gonna to try to turn it on, it's not gonna work. And then when you take the case off, you open up the battery case, and what do you see inside of it? Acid. All that acid came out and got all over the tool, and it corroded the connection. So just replacing the battery sometimes is not gonna be good enough, all right? Some of, that, some of that stuff is gonna get on the terminals and give us a little bit of resistance. So sometimes you got to scrape that stuff up. Now when you're doing that, do it over a trash can. All right, don't just let it fall down onto the floor because a little kid could come along and you don't want no little kid getting that on their hands or their feet or something because and then putting it in their mouth. So you want to make sure to kind of be careful with that stuff. That electrolyte when it comes out, you don't want it to get all over. If you ever get it on your hands, wash your hands off. Um, all right. And I'll talk about this in a minute. You don't have to write this, because I'm gonna show you this with a diagram. So you got, it moves in one direction, negative to positive. You don't have to worry about writing any of the other stuff. That's pretty much the big deal. So here's your Duracell battery, your dry cell battery. Pretty much what I'm passing around to you there. And if you take it away and look at the inside, all right, you'll see that it's just the outer case with an electrolyte in the center. And then that part that bumps up right here, that positive part, is a rod that connects down into the electrolyte. All right? So the rod is a carbon rod that's going to be our positive part of the battery. All right? So it's got some pot. And then this one over here is our negative. Yeah, you can go ahead and draw that if you want. And then there's your electrolyte and label it up. So that when you connect it up, all right? So now we got our circuit. You got your power source, you got your conductor. You got your load, which in this case is going to be a light, and it's going to flow. How's it going to flow? Which way? It's going to go to the right or to the left? To the right. To the right, so we go from positive to negative. Left. What we just say? What'd you write down? Negative positive. negative positive. So which way is it going to flow? Left. It's from the left, that's right. So it's going to come out through here. The electrons are going to move and go through the light, create a little bit of something heat energy, light energy some motor moving maybe, but in this case it's a light, and then it goes all the way back to the positive. So those electrons have a complete circuit to flow through. And make sure when you're drawing, where's your notes? When you're drawing, and I look at your notes, I want to see it strobing like that. Okay. All right. So I want that multimedia effect for your notes. Can you take off your hat please, sir? All right, alternating current. Alternating current is going to be something like this. You've probably seen something like this. Uh, I don't know if you've actually seen it up close and personal, but uh, you've definitely seen it on TV where they'll have this on a big, tall pole, and then they'll have three blades coming off of it, and it's pretty much all white. You know what I'm talking about there? You know what they call that? It's on a big, they've got a motor on a big, tall pole, and then they got the three blades that come off of it. What are the blades doing? Moving air. Yeah, they're moving, that, moving from the air. The air is causing those blades to move. And when that blade moves, then that creates, they got this little magnetic field in here. And anytime that you have a magnet and you have the North Pole and the South Pole together, what, and I, I kind of hold them apart, what do you feel when you hold a magnet North and South together? Resistance. What? Resistance. No, not resistance. Not like force. Lines of force. Ooh, there you go. Lines of force. You're feeling the pull. What happens if I flip the magnet over and you got a north 
facing another north. What happens then? They, just, they, repel. they repel. Okay, so when they're unlike, they attract. And when they're light, they repel. But you can feel that. You've all felt that. You've all played with magnets. Yeah. Now, this is what they figured out. They figured out that if you have two magnets in this north and south pole, and you feel those lines of force, and I'll, I'll draw that up here. Let me go ahead and draw that up here. So let's say I got one magnet, and we got the north on this way facing this way, and then we got the south facing this way, right? And the lines of force are going from north to south this way like that. So these are, this is my magnets. These are the lines of force, they call it. And then they figured out, once you take a wire, a conductor, and you run it through that line of force, that generates a little bit of current. That generates a little bit of voltage. That generates a little bit of power. So therefore, that would make this a generator. So if you take a look here, I'm going to set this up on AC volts. All right, AC volts. I'm going to set it up at its highest setting at 750. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to connect it up to my white and my black leads. Now this motor has a permanent magnet in it, and it's a pretty good magnet. So if you felt the shocker, what you're feeling there is about 18 volts. But if I let you hold the red and the black wire, and then I take it and I spin it, oh, getting up to 20 volts. Yeah, getting up to 30 volts. And if I could take a drill even, and I hook it up to a drill, and then I hit that drill on high speed, this thing will generate up to 400 volts of power. So this one's going to feel it. Oh, look, I got it up to about 40, 42, 47. All right, and then you can take it and try and spin it like that. All right, so I'm actually generating a little bit of power. All right, how do you think that would feel? Very good. Uh -huh. You want to hold it? Feel you fine? Feel you want to hold it? All right, now hold this one. Now, did you hold the other shocker, the one that I got up there? Yeah. Yeah, how'd that feel? Is that okay? You gotta hold it. Yeah, you got it with both hands? Yeah. You're not holding it. I feel it. You feel it? Are you sure? I'm not seeing no reaction from you. Okay, there we go. I like that. Oh, you want to try the AC one, okay? So AC, this is alternating current, and this is going to be generated. It's not going to be from a battery. This is going to be generated from something. All right, and they're going to usually, what other things could I use besides wind to make this thing spin to generate power? What other water. things do we got? Water. Water was the first really kind of sort of thing that they were using to generate power, like in the Hoover Dam. So the Hoover Dam, they were blocking up a lot of water on one side, and the reason for it is because they wanted it to flow through a turbine that was going to turn a motor to generate the power. And they'll have more than one motor. They might have 20, 30 motors set up, but they might only be using three to six at one time, okay, for three phase voltage. But they, they might have more than one motor, okay? So it's gonna move in one direction than the other. That's produced by something like what I'm showing you there with that little motor. That's a motor that we use to create power is a generator, but they're both pretty much the same thing. Right? So here we go, here's our alternating current. There's our little motor, and what's gonna happen now, same thing with the wire and the bulb. What's gonna go on is the, the, the alternating current's gonna go one way, so at first it's gonna move in one direction, and then it's gonna stop, and it's gonna go the other way. So boom, there, it went one way, and this is happening 60 times a second. Unless you got one of those nice high definition TVs, it's 240 hertz, which that's happening 240 times a second. So it's a lot smoother. The strobe isn't as slow with uh, the 240 as it is with the 60. So it just keeps doing that back and forth. So that's what we're talking about. That's a hertz. 60 cycles per second is our rating in the United States. You go to other countries, it might not be the same, which means if you plug your Xbox in, you know, you go down and go see some family down in South America and they got 50 hertz, you might burn up your Xbox. Yeah. All right. It might not work the same. All right, cycles of frequency. What happens there with that? So we got one alteration, that's gonna be a cycle. And then the number of cycles in a second is frequency. We measure that in hertz. So the measurement of frequency, I need you to write this down, is in hertz. Measurement of frequency is in hertz. So now you got volts, amps, ohms, watts, and hertz. There's another word in there for you. Wait, wait. Yeah, 
Ready? No, no. Now? No. Oh. Oh. Okay, now? No, no. Oh, no. We only write in this. Measurement of frequency hurts. Don't write everything. It's too much. Oh, paparazzi. I heard it. Is it you? Yeah. I'm the smart board. Uh-huh. Oh. Okay. All right, I'm moving. All right. This is all on Blackboard, too, for you. All these, all these presentations are. Oh, well. Yeah, all this stuff is. I got a lot. If you've never been on Blackboard, I have more presentations than you can handle. So generate the alternating current. This is what's going to happen. I just kind of showed you a little bit about it over there with that, but they got a better drawing. So we got that magnetic field. You feel those lines of force. All right, that's going to produce my electrical current. So here we go. You got our magnet, north and south pole. You feel the lines of force. All right, and then here's my conductor, the wire. Now look, you're going to see it from the front. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to draw this. Because over here, we're going to draw that cycle and what it looks like on a graph. All right, so passing the conductor between the two magnets. A little bit of current up there. A little bit of current. Is it getting anything over here or over here? No. no. So what do you think the voltage is when it gets to this 90 degree mark and that 90 degree mark? Anything? Zero. You're a pretty smart kid. Yeah, there you go. Zero. All right, so here's what it would look like on a graph. Hold on. It's, it's going to look like a sine wave. This is where we, this is where, oh, do this up. This is a nice little graph. So just make three lines. This is going to be zero volts. This is going to be positive. Doesn't matter what it is. This is going to be negative right here. And then you've got the angles of a circle. Because we're going to be starting here at zero degrees. This is our 90 degree mark. This is 180, 270, and all the way back to 360. Now remember, this is happening how many times a second? 60. 60, so it's real quick. Now those of you that are in some of the advanced math, trying to figure out why are you doing tangents and cosines and figuring out sine waves on graphs, this is why. This is where it gets applied in the real world. So electrical engineers, mechanical guys, they kind of they kind of know a little bit about this, all right. So this is the graph. But you got the south pole magnet here, north pole magnet there. They're attracted to each other, right? And then they got the wire that's going to flow through it. See what happens to the sine wave? It went on, when it was right here. We're all the way at peak voltage. And then by the time it comes out and gets back around outside of the magnet, the voltage drops back down to zero. And then what's going to happen here is this is on the negative side. So it's going to swoop down like that. So that's why when you see this meter, direct current just has two lines that go, one's a solid and one's a dotted. So if you're look on the meter, sometimes they might not even have letters. They might just have a symbol like this, a solid and a dotted. That means you're going to be checking DC voltage. But if the meter looks like this with the sine wave, what do you think that means? AC voltage, alternating current, okay? So you got to know the difference between the symbols on some of the meters when you use your meter. All right, so has everybody got that drawn down? Drawn down? Yeah, hey, I'm going to go back and show you again what happens. Because now what happens if I get another motor? All right, another generator. Well, then I can change the orientation of the power to where it doesn't start here with this one. I might be able to delay it a little bit. 90 degrees out of phase. All right, and then I can get another motor, a third motor, and I can maybe delay it 180 degrees out of phase so that they're not all going to be on the same sine wave. They'll all have about a 90 degree separation between each phase. So I can have single phase, which is like this one here. We only got one sine wave. We don't really have a double phase, a two phase. We just have single phase where both of them are going to be hot, 120 volts, 240 volts. All right. When you got two 120 volt power leads, it's still single phase, but they got 240, it could be 208, but 240 volts. Okay, remember the numbers I told you you got to remember? Low voltage, 24 volts. What's the one that's coming out of this power? If I was to plug it in right here, what would I see? 120. 120. All right, what about all your stove, water heater, and AC unit? What type of power does that use? 240. Okay, so we got, or it could be 208, but we'll just go ahead and we'll use that 240 number. But when that one's getting 240, it doesn't have one sine wave going. It's got two sine waves going. One's 90 degrees out of phase. That's how they get the higher voltage stuff. 
And then they got three phase. They got a three phase circuit with some of the motors. All right, those are great. They don't need yeah. capacitors. They start up real easy. They're really beefy. They can work real hard, right? So the three phase would have three side waves going to it, each one 90 degrees out of sync. So this is how they generate the alternating current. And what you were feeling right there, when I was spinning that magnet, I was spinning that rotor, and the conductor was going through the lines of force in the magnet, and you were feeling it, right? A little more than the direct current. Was it a little more? Yeah, wait till you buddy up. Remember how you buddied up and did the resistance, and with the direct current, it felt like it went down? It's not going to feel the same with the alternating current. Alternating current is going to get you a little different. They got this other thing called effective voltage, right? So when we're going from zero to peak, all right, that's not really our true voltage. Really, I'm probably getting about 170 volts out of this outlet right here. But my meter is only reading what we call 70% of that, the effective voltage. So the effective voltage is going to be about 70% of peak to peak. It's not the true voltage coming from the power company. This is actually just a mathematical average that the meter's doing because it's got a little computer in it and it can do this high caliber math stuff. But what we got is we've only got about 70% of the voltage, which is going to be a math figure of about 0 0.707. So that peak to peak, all right, is not really what you're going to be reading at the meter. That peak to peak is going to be a little different than what we're actually reading. So let's take a look here again. So what do we got? You got it going all the way up to 90 degrees. When it was touching the mat, I'll go back. And then it goes down, all right? So that's our peak voltage. But really what this meter is reading is about 70% of that. So it's going to get an average right in here somewhere of our effective voltage. So this is what we're getting our work done. So if you had to figure it out, and really you were reading 170 volts, when you multiply that 170 times our 0 0.707, that's where we get the 120 from. All right? And there's meters that have what's called true RMS. All right? I'm going to talk about that a little later. That's going to go a little farther than what I want to do today. So that's our effective voltage, all right? And that's what our meter's going to measure. Hold on, I'll go back, all right? Here's our three phase. So I was telling you about the three different, now we got three different motors. So now I got, really, I can use all the same motor, three different wires going through it. And now they're about, oh, what is that, 120 degrees apart? So yeah, they're about 120 degrees apart because you got to make a complete circle, 120, 240, 360, all right? So 120, 240, 360, we're back. So now we got three different wires, and now no matter what, one of them is pretty much always going to be in the field of current. All right? So what would that look like on our sine wave? This is our original graph, 90, 180. This is the separate line. So look at this right here. Boom, this one's getting power, blue. Now the brown's picking it up. Now the pink's picking it up. So now you see what's happening? Now, look at that. That's getting a little advanced, though. What type of voltage is that? 277. No, not 277. Alternating. Mm -hmm. No, it's alternating current. Yep, you got that right. Alternating. Sine wave. It's a sine wave. Very good. How many sine waves are there? Three. Three. So, therefore, what phase is this? Three phase. Three phase. Three separate 120 volt circuits, right? And you can only measure two at a time. So, what's the maximum amount of voltage I could read? No, not 360, because I only got two leads. I would need a third lead to read 360. I can only read two of the wires at one time. 240. 240, 240, 240 yeah, 240, 240 volts, yeah. All right, so there you go with that. That's gotta, it just keeps going. It just keeps on going, those sine waves, as long as something is spinning this wire through the magnetic field, as long as we got water flowing, all right, or could have uh, Troy just working a crank. All right. Or you pedal on a bike. You ever see those guys at the bike and they're like, oh, let's see how much power oh, you can yeah. generate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got all kinds of stuff. Wage. Water was originally the first way, kind of, all right, that they were using. I'm not going to go over this right now today. That's enough for you today. Um, that gets you up to this part. Let's see. You had to copy some stuff and you said, go back. Yeah. Effective voltage stuff. Is that it right there? Yeah. All right. Just all you need right here. Boom, boom, boom. I showed you all this. Okay, so that's going to be the first half of this little lecture on AC-DC current. We're going to talk about uh, impedance and reactance, all right, but not today. We're just, we got three-phase, single-phase, that's pretty good today.